Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in crypto and bring them out of bite-sized pieces. Today, just as the thumbnail suggests, we're going to take a look into 2022 by retrospectively taking a look back into 2021. We're going to try to answer the eternal question, is hodling the answer? And the answer is no. And yes, I'll explain it a bit. Also, we're going to take a look at uh, what history tells us, just taking a look at what has happened, hope potentially what could happen. We're going to take a look at why $2.3 trillion uh, for our market cap is absolutely nothing. And then we're going to talk about a video we'll do at the end of the year, which is uh, 2021 predictions that I made in January and how I measured up. And then also, we're going to take a look at my exit strategy and just talk about did I live up and do what I said I was going to do. So we'll take a look at all those things. But first, take a look at what's going on into the market today. So today, it is is the 27th uh, Monday beautiful day here in Puerto Rico about 80 degrees just got back from the beach very nice family was in town and I took a couple days off I mean look I mean a couple days for the for the for the holidays is a good time to actually sit back and reflect about what is super important and usually uh, pretty much family but uh, today uh, we're getting back to the grind taking a look at what is going on so it's been a pretty good pretty good time frame. I mean, Bitcoin's up, Ethereum's up. And if we really take a look at the seven day, we can see there's been some some pretty monstrous gains. We look at Solana, 12%, Cardano, 22%. We've got uh, Terra up 16%, Polkadot, 30% in seven days, 19% for Shiba Inu. Wow. Polygon, 27 Crypto.com, 26 33 for Uniswap, 27 for Chainlink, and, and on and on. 74% for Near Protocol. Man, that's a monster. Uh, and just just on down the ride down the road so there's a lot of good things that are are happening i mean if it wasn't for these seven days december would have been pretty bleak and then if we take a look at just some on-chain analysis over at crypto quant nothing really going on too exciting uh for most of these i mean the all miners outflow in the purple we don't see a lot of miners selling uh, the all exchange reserve for bitcoin looks like people are still taking off bitcoin maybe a little uptick and a little bit more so when people take Bitcoin off the exchanges. That's good. They put in cold storage. They can't sell it. Uh, all exchange reserve for Ethereum again going down. Uh, take or buy volume. You know, these whales are just buyers are just kind of propping with the price because they're like, we don't want it to go too far down. And then, yes, we've propped it up a little bit. Uh, but this is the one that always concerns me. And it's been high the last three, four days. It's uh, the all exchange estimated leverage ratio. And we get above 0 0.2. Those are pretty all-time high numbers and we just hit 0 0.2103 now we're at oh sorry now we're at the all-time almost the all-time high 0 0.209 so those leverage plays out there could potentially uh be could, not catastrophic it's just a natural cycle but expect some volatility when you have a lot of leverage that's all i can tell you so that's what's going on into the market now what we're really going to do is just take a look at into the question is holding the answer now on this channel, I've talked about just buying and holding, buying and holding. And is that really the correct approach? Sometimes. And here's what this was actually came about. There was a tweet that I thought was pretty darn interesting. This was from Blockworks. And they said, here's the price of the top 10 cryptos last Christmas. Last Christmas, 2020. Bitcoin was 23,000. Ethereum was 633. Binance coin, 33 bucks. Solana, $1.45. Cardano, 15 cents. XRP, 31. Eh. Polkadot was five bucks. Avalanche, almost three. Luna was 53 cents. And Doge, 0 0.004. And I have to tell you, I owned all of them, except for Binance coin. I never really got into Binance coin, just didn't. But I've owned and still own, well, every single one, except for Doge. I got rid of Doge when uh, elon musk was on uh, saturday night live i sold it at 66 cents i'm like there's no way it's going to, it's not going to a buck and that was like one of the few times i've sold the top but who knows in 10 years dogecoin could be two bucks i have no idea but at that point just kind of made sense uh, for me and i just said hey this isn't a get rich quick scheme it's a get rich over time market you don't need to trade you don't need to be a genius you don't need to have a ton of money just buy and hold when you make it it's very simple but some people make it complex and it's not and there really is some caveats to what I just said when I talked about there in that tweet. Because if you just hold it forever, would it be good? Let's take a look at a little bit of history, shall we? Because if we take a look, before we get into history, let me just play this video. It's, it's, it's been stuck in my head for the longest time. This is uh, Nick Murray, and he is the advisor to the advisors. Been in financial industry for 50 plus years. He is the one that people turn to as far as like sage advice. And he gives some really good advice here. It's only a minute long. Just take a listen. The stock market in the United States 
in our lifetimes, I mean, since World War II, has gone down an average of 30%, an average of every five years, kind of whether it needed to or not. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what was the difference in all that time between investment success and investment failure? I will argue that it, it, it was the single mistake of mistaking the temporary declines for a permanent loss, panicking out, thereby creating the, the permanent loss that you were that you said you were fleeing from. Right. Whereas if you had just sat there, never mind adding to your positions, which most people should be doing over most of their accumulating lifetimes, if not all of their accumulating lifetimes, but but put that aside. Put just if you just sat there the temporary decline will go away and it will and it will be then followed inevitably by a period of above average returns. That's the cycle. The big thing here is that, yes, he's talking about the stock market, but I think more in depth is uh, probably the S&P 500 index or just indexes in general, because, you know, stocks can go to zero too. I mean, it's not like we're the only crypto or we're the only market that can go to zero because some stocks do go to zero. Some companies go out of business. It does actually absolutely happen. So when he's talking about these things, it's like, well, is this everything? Because if we really then uh, take a look at what history tells us, which is something like this, I want to show you something. This, I love looking at these old charts because it just kind of gives us a perspective and, and the ability to really zoom out. And this is a historical snapshot uh, from 3rd of December, 2017. And look at the prices here. This is third. This is during part of almost uh, the very tip top of the uh, bull run. The next two weeks, Bitcoin shot up to like almost twenty thousand. But on the third of December, it was eleven thousand three twenty three. And if you bought there, I mean, right now you're still feeling pretty good. But what about the other ones? How about Ethereum four sixty five? Yeah, you'd feel pretty darn good, right? Because right now it's like four thousand, pretty good ten x over four years. Okay, but and it gets a little bit of shaky here. To hold Bitcoin Cash, it was at 1559 at this point, and I went to a little 34500 at some point. XRP was 25 cents. Not too bad, but look at what's happened. Dash, remember Dash? Dash was $768. Litecoin was 101 bucks. Bitcoin Gold was a thing at $320. Cardano was 13 cents. All right, now we're talking. And then Monero was $200 and then on down the, down the road that you can see. And like, there's some things in here that, I mean, I haven't seen forever. Like, look at salt. Salt was $5.56. Salt was one of those projects that was like DeFi before DeFi. It was, you were able to actually get loans on the salt protocol and it was, it was supposed to open up everything and had a really great team. It was awesome. Where are we now? So that's a great question. Before I even answer those, let's take a, let's just jump forward just to a couple months two or three months 11 of february 2018 remember bitcoin had gone all the way up to 20,000, 19 something right and then ethereum had gone up to gosh 16 1700 so bitcoin was back down in two months 8100 so if you bought over here and this wasn't even the top you know you feel not too great you'd be like wow it's still down which is what a lot of us actually feel because the volatility Ethereum, 814. XRP <laughs> was actually a dollar. That's pretty good. Bitcoin Cash, 1200. All right. Cardano, 36 cents. Litecoin, 148. Wow. Stellar, 37. Neo, remember Neo? Yeah, right. $103. EOS, which was supposed to, there was a million dollar bet for EOS. It was going to go to the moon because of how there's these, these great airdrops and everything else. 841. NEM, IOTA, Dash, again, 580. Monero, 229. And on and on down the road. So, Let's fast forward just a little bit more and take a look at 2nd of December of 2018. So we went from 3rd of December 2017, just a year later, we hodled the whole time. Let's just say we hodled the whole time. You had $11,000 Bitcoin. Now what do you got? You got a $4,100 Bitcoin. $4,100. Now again, you are still feeling pretty good. If you came to today at $51,000, that's not too bad. XRP at 36 cents. Um, if you're holding for four years, that's eh, about right. Ethereum is 116. Oh, you are doing great, right? Stellar 16. E Bitcoin Cash 172. EOS 285. Litecoin 33. Tethers, nobody cares. Nobody cared about that back then. Bitcoin SV. I don't know why this was even here. 
and on down the road uh, cardano at four cents so you can see that in some of these it worked out okay and we can see just even more into history if we take a look at let's just take bitcoin cash bitcoin cash remember here how great it was when you're looking at uh 1559 and then at a like a crash it was at 1217 well look at it now if you would have hold held the whole time you would be a whopping $471 for Bitcoin Cash. That's what it is right now. You would have done here, if you would have bought two, anywhere along, let me go down so you can actually see this, anywhere along this continuum around here, it would have sucked for a long time. You would have hodled and hodled and hodled. It's going to go up, hodled, it's going to go up. And it does, and it reached the exact same price four years ago that you are over here. It's going to go up. No, it doesn't go up. It goes down. And then let's take a look also at Dash. Remember Dash was over here and it was like doing so great. Dash at $768. Well, now it's at $153. But how did it do? Well, it hit some pretty big highs. But if you just say here, well, I, look, it's at $346. But I'm going to hodl, hodl, $727, not $1191, hodl, $1200, hodl, hodl. Wait, what? $460, $220, I'll hodl. I'll hodl. I'll hold on. I'll hold on. Ah, I told you it was going to go up. I told you. 339 which is the exact same price over here. Hold on. Hold on. Maybe in 10 years. Who knows? I don't know. Then let's take a look at Litecoin. Litecoin, whopping $159. $159. Where were we at before? Uh, 101 So good for you. You made 50 bucks. That's good. That's great. You know? So you're here, and it comes down here. So you're like, ah, oh, not too bad. It comes up a little bit. I'm hodl holding and I go all the way up. Nah, 354, it'll go up higher than that. Hodl, 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 hodl. So, also, let's talk about one of the last ones salt. Salt, back here, which was right here, 556. And you have it over here at 12 cents. So, again, is hodling the answer? Not all the time. As you can see clearly right here on some projects, it's better to let go because it ain't coming back. And maybe SALT does. I have no idea what SALT is doing. I mean, they they put their, they slap their name on a conference and it seems like that's their bigger thing right now. I don't think it's really going as far as the, the crypto. But uh, SALT, there it is. And then what about IOTA? We talked about that as well. Same thing. I mean, look, and we are riddled with these types of things where they don't even come back to their all-time highs. Uh, here's Cardano. I think this is one of the one of the better ones, obviously. Because look over here. Had this little little peak here at a buck eighteen. And I I and I think a lot of people hodled all this way through. And then here we are going up again. So it works out okay. Ethereum worked out, Bitcoin worked out, but it doesn't always work out, and that's how it is. So and then lastly, we'll talk about Monero. Look at this, just comes here, goes down, comes up. So again, the question really comes down to, um, is holding the answer? And the answer is sometimes. And what you really gotta do, and of course, everybody wants the answer, the perfect answer. Rob, give us the answer. Tell us what to invest into. First of all, I can't do that. I'm not an investment advisor. Second of all, I'm just some YouTuber. I'm just some guy who invests into crypto and digital assets. I can tell you what I'm currently investing in, and it's a lot of stuff. But the prospect for me is just looking at the UTT. I look at the utility. Does it actually do something? Is there updates and things are actually going on? How's the team doing? The T? Uh, do they have a pretty strong? Are they building? Are they uh, making ways to the future? They have good developers. And then tokenomics. How does it look? Does it have a quadrillion tokens, which is going to be drowned out? Or it's just got like a couple hundred million or something like that. It all depends on the project itself. So to answer your question, is holding the answer? Not all the time. And even in these, these great projects that do pretty well, you, I can't say you, me. What I do is I don't hodl like I used to all the time because over 2018, 2019, it worked out pretty well for me. I just hodled because it was kind of a crappy year. But as time goes on, you have to understand that um, I know these products are going to change the world. We know that they will. But the question is not if they're going to change the world, but when are they going to change the world and how long does it actually take? So as time goes on, I will dollar cost average in 
and I would dollar cost average out. And that's what I'm trying to do today. So I can't tell you what to do. You can hold any project that you want to forever, but I'm just letting you know that at some point, some of these projects ain't gonna make it. And that's abundantly clear. And uh, if you get too much as far as the emotional part, it always uh, or usually doesn't end up uh, in the right direction. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Let's move on to our next piece where I just talk about really quickly why our market cap of, I think it's actually 2.5 trillion now, uh, is nothing, is nothing. And I always like to, to, to bring this up just as a, a focal point for everybody because I know 2021 was a tough year. We thought December was going to be fireworks. I did just didn't work out like that. Does that mean it's over? No, doesn't mean it's over. It means we got a lot of room to grow. The question is, I can tell you that I think that crypto and digital assets will really take over a big splice of a lot of different industries. I just can't tell you exactly when that's going to happen. But right now, we've got a lot of big players in the space. So this is a, a graph I always bring out every so often. This is in this was actually in May of 2020. These little squares right here is worth $100 billion, which seems like a lot. Right, 100 billion. I don't have a billion, but it'd be nice if I did. And here's what this represents so Bitcoin back in May of 2020 was only 204. Uh, sorry, entire crypto was 244 billion. Military spending was a lot more than that. The US budget deficit is a lot more than 3.8 trillion right now. We're just talking about printing off another two and a half trillion. Coins and banknotes, 6.6 .6 trillion. The Fed's balance sheet, way more than that, over 7 trillion. Billionaires, gold was at 11 trillion. I think maybe it's like 12 trillion now. Why couldn't we eat into some of these, you know, uh, balance sheets and uh, and revenue? Fortune 500 companies. Here's the stock market, 90 trillion, probably around 100 trillion now, who knows. Money supply, uh, we're looking at uh, almost 100 trillion again. Here's global debt. 253 trillion here's the global real estate can you imagine when someone starts tokenizing these different assets as far as real estate goes oh it's gonna be huge 280 trillion dollars man here's global wealth 380 trillion dollars here's derivatives that's uh, a quadrillion which is like shiba inu's market cap i think or circulating supply not market cap excuse me so if you're looking at uh you know where are we and and, and are we going to take off yeah, this is us. So that's just a quick reminder just to remind you that, yeah, it wasn't the greatest year. We didn't see like uh, the all-time highs on December. We saw them mostly in April, but I still think we got a lot of room to run. Let me just think about that in the comments. And then uh, to finish up, I'm just going to talk about real quick the strategy moving forward and as far as uh, what I plan to do and this video I want to do. So I still think that dollar cost averaging works out, but you have to dollar cost average in and dollar cost average out. And when I talk about buying the dip, remember that those those graphs we saw? Let's just take XRP, for example. Remember when it was at uh, 36 cents, then it went up to a dollar, then it went back to 25 cents? All those times when it actually goes down, uh, I can't tell you what to do, but I buy the dip because my average cost base price goes down when the dip goes down. So like if I buy XRP at a buck and then I initially bought it at 25 cents and I meet in the middle, well, my average cost is much less. And then when that price comes, I can sell and just go, well, at least I got to wash if it didn't work out. Or maybe I wait till uh, XRP goes to hundred bucks like some people think it's going to do. Sure, whatever. But uh, still DCA, still buy the dip and still hodl to a point. The, the question is which of those projects are. I will reveal my projects that I'm going to really focus in on 2022. Uh, when we do the follow up to this video, which is my price prediction, I will tell you that uh, Bitcoin, I thought was going to 150K. Then in uh, June or July, I thought, well, maybe 130K. Totally off on that one. But there was some that I actually hit and I had some decent ones but I had some massive misses. And uh, that's why we wanna talk about uh, the things that uh, didn't work out too well and the things that did. And we'll do that in uh, later, actually four or five days or so when the end of the year comes about. And then we'll also talk about uh, my exit strategy, which you can see right here. And I'll talk about how uh, the ones that I, I nailed every single one and actually took the profits like I said I was going to do. And then others, which didn't work out because I got a little too greedy and then the catalyst that made it all up in the end. And I'll talk about that on the video. So that's it for today. And uh, look, I know it was a lot of information, a lot of things that we talked about. Don't get discouraged. 
I think we've got a long ways to go, but uh, there's going to be some little shift for me, a little strategies, but that's it. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. A lot of these talk about are time sensitive and that's it for today. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one.